find the Lord as I try to do that as well. Father, in Jesus' name, we're grateful. Oh, yes, we are. Hallelujah. To be saved again, Lord. Thank you for the joy and thank you for the assurance. Thank you, O oh God of heaven, for just letting us know. Lord, that we have a, pass, a peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we can lay our head down at night, Lord, and say it as well with our soul. And we are thankful for that. Lord, we don't want to take for granted, oh God, the blessings you've given unto us. Lord, I am praying for every person now in attendance. Lord, there may even be some outside that we're not aware of. But I am praying that the Holy Spirit of God would minister and move. In the days that we live in, Lord God, I recognize this and I confess this before you right now. Dear God, we cannot do this without you. Lord, we cannot have church without you. Lord, we can't preach without you. Lord, we can't live without you. And Lord, we are wanting you right now more than ever. Lord, not just for Sunday morning. Lord, not just for Sunday morning service. But God, for our daily life, we're asking of you right now that you bless us. Lord, I need you. I'm asking that you'd fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, that our words will not be dead words. Our words will not be cold words. Our words, oh God, will be seasoned with salt, seasoned with grace, anointed by the Holy Spirit of God. Father, I'm praying for every person here today. Oh God, that they do have ears to hear. Lord, I pray that they have not, oh God, send away the day of grace. Lord, I pray that they have not gotten to the place where they cannot sense the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, where they cannot hear the voice of of God, I'm asking in Jesus' name. Father, do the work here, I pray. Bless, we're asking in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Church, in Genesis chapter number six is not where we're going to be at, but I want to read this here. In Genesis chapter six here, the Bible gives us an account of a dreadful uh, proclamation of God. And it tells us of how God sees everything, of what's going on. And I'll remind you this morning, God knows exactly what's taking place. Nothing has caught him off guard. Our God sees it all. In Genesis chapter 6, the population is growing. Mankind is growing and progressing there as well. And the Bible says in verse number 3 that God said himself, he said this now. He said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. He said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that, that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. God proclaimed right there himself and put a day of judgment. After 120 years, that's it. He's going to send his judgment and the flood was going to come. Now later on the Bible tells us in verse number 5 that God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and every imagination of the faults of his heart was only evil continually. Did y'all get what the Word of God says? Did you hear the Scriptures this morning that when God looked down and He seen the heart of man in Genesis chapter 6, that He seen the thoughts of man, and the thoughts of man were evil only continually. Which meaning in morning and at noon and at, at daytime there, that their mind, their thoughts was evil constantly. Even when they slept, they dreamt of evil things. You ever had an evil dream? I know you have. Have you ever had an evil thought? I know you have. Here the Bible says that continually, all the day long, 24 hours a day, these people that God's declaring about of their mind and how it was and the condition of their mind. I ask you this this morning. Do you know the condition of your own mind? Do you know the condition of your mind? mind. Jesus said this here and listen to the preacher very well. I hope that you hear me this morning. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 24 in verse number uh, 36. The Bible says, but of the day and the hour knoweth no man, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only knoweth what hour when Jesus is coming. Church, he's coming. Amen. Church, he's coming. I don't know if you're ready for his coming, but Jesus Christ is coming. Why? He said this here, no man knows the day, no man knows the hour, only God. He said in verse number 37, but as in the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the, the days there, the days of Noah before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving into Mary until the day Noah entered into the ark. What are you saying here, preacher? Jesus said now in Genesis chapter 6, 
6, that man's thoughts was evil only continually. It was so evil in their thought process and their mind there that they did not even retain their actions of being wicked. They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying. They were thinking that there was no consequences to the lifestyle that they were living there and they were living such a wicked lifestyle that God was no longer in their mind, their mindset of living in such a day there of every single day of eating. Boy, they were blessed. They had food to eat. They were drinking there. They were marrying. They didn't think there was nothing wrong in the marriage that we're having there. And God is giving us a glimpse here, church, of what he did there in Genesis chapter 6. And if you open up your eyes to the Holy Spirit of God, you'll realize that we're in the days of Noah. Man is living today with no mind. And one will say you'd have to have a mind to lose a mind. I say amen to that. But I'll say this right here. This world has lost its mind. This world has lost its mind. Living a life without consequences is, my dear friend, insanity. But we are living that. We are seeing that oh, right before us today. There are people that are living life as if there is no consequences. Regardless if you make a good choice or poor choice, you make a righteous choice or sinful choice, there's consequences that come with your choices. And there's a world today that believes that they can live however they want to. There's a mindset that people think that they deserve every single thing that they get. And furthermore, they deserve more than that they're receiving. That's the mindset. I'm telling you, they were eating, they were drinking, they didn't care. They just wanted to consume upon what? Their lust. They wanted to satisfy their lust there. In the days of Noah, we see that. There was a haughtiness of mind there of where you could not tell them anything. You couldn't get anything. Matter of fact, you read over there when the Bible tells us in the days of Noah there, Peter tells us Noah was what? He was a preacher of righteousness. He was a preacher of righteousness when he preached the Holy Word of God there. Only his family was saved by the grace of God. Only his family listened to the message of Noah there. This tells me that he lived in a generation when he preached the word of God, it didn't prick their hearts. When's the last time the word of God pricked your heart? Now be honest now. Quit playing around. Quit deceiving yourself. When's the last time that the word of God pricked your heart and put you underneath conviction? When's the last time that you fell down before God because his word spoke to you. There's a haughtiness of mind that says, boy, it's creeping in. And I know it's creeping in. You can't tell me anything. You're not going to tell me I'm right. You're not going to tell me I'm wrong. I'm my own God. Oh, that's where we're living at now. And boy, listen to me well, church. There's a mindset that even though they're out there today, that God is not real. And if God is real, I'll set him straight when I die. That's a dreadful thing, I know, but here's the thing, my dear friend. It's happening in church. Amen. See, we can look at the world and we can cast that stone at them. We can look at the world and we say, how dare they marry such people? How dare they indulge in such a lifestyle? But yet you live your life all however you want to. And you say, I'm saved. Miss Dana's already said it, hallelujah. He's Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus is Lord. People live in their life. I'm saved, but he ain't my Lord. Oh, no, dear friend, you're not going to change that. Neither am I. He's Lord. Listen to me well. The Bible's talking about the mind here, the mindset over there in Genesis chapter 6 and the mindset that we see as well even before us right now. And Jesus said, this is how people are going to be living. This is what's going to take place when I come back, when I step out. Hallelujah. Can I say this as well, church? He is coming. Hallelujah. And the trumpet's going to sound. And one day when the trumpet sounds, I'm heaven bound. Amen. Amen. The trumpet could be right now. How will he find you in your mindset? Oh, listen, Fred, you listen to me well. 
How is Jesus going to find you in your mindset here? I want you to turn with me. And I'm moving on, I promise you. I want you to turn with me in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, please. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 there, and we're going to read these verses of Scripture here and give to you a little bit of what God's laid on our heart, and we'll conclude the rest tonight, I promise you, on this here. But can I tell you this here, church? The mind, before we read that, the mind is the part of the soul of man. The mind is a part of the soul of man that God has redeemed. Our soul has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb if you're a child of God. Now, if you're saved, your soul has been redeemed through the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 23 and in verse number 7, he that thinketh in his heart, so is he. So how you think is how you will be. Your thought process, your mind is very important unto God. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us over there in Isaiah chapter 1, God has given us a mind. Why? Sister Margie, so we can reason. Amen. I'm so glad that we can reason things out, aren't y'all? Amen. I don't know about you. Maybe you've never had a confrontation in life and you needed to talk to somebody and reason things out. But the Bible says over there, the confrontation that really you need to resolve is between you and God. In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse number 18, he said, come now, let us reason together. Did not God say that? He said, come now, let us reason together. Your sins are scarlet. Your sins are red there. He said, but I want to make them white, white as snow. Hallelujah. And how's that going to take place? Through my son, Jesus Christ. God has given us a mind so we can reason. He's given us a mind, not so we can lose it, but so that we can keep it. Amen? We should have a mind there. May I say this? Now listen to me. And I'm hurrying up. I promise you. Why? And this here message here is to the church there. I know this is. But I want you to know this, dear friend, that every person that's lost there, you need to be born again by the grace of God. And when you're born again by the grace of God, according to 2 Corinthians right there in 5.17, therefore for any man being Christ. He's a new creature, right? Old things are passed away. That old mindset that you used to have has now been changed by the grace of God. You're no longer thinking like the old man. You're no longer living like the old woman there because why? You're in Jesus Christ and Jesus has changed your life. That's what Jesus does. Amen? Amen. Can I say this right here? If the salvation you have hasn't changed your life, you need to come and get saved, friend. I'm not being mean, I'm being honest with you. Hey, the Bible tells us that's why God, Jesus told Nicodemus there, very smart, intellectual man who had a mind there. He told him, he said, Nicodemus, he said, I'm telling you that you must be born again. What did he say? He said, marvel not. Don't you ponder down this pathway here and trying to reason your way out. He said, marvel not that I say unto you that you must be born again because why? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. And when God births you again, are you listening church? Hey, when God gives you that new birth, I don't know who's listening this morning. Hey, but when God gives you a new birth, hallelujah, that new birth, when you get up, you're not the same old individual. He changes you in salvation. <laughs> hallelujah, amen. I'm glad I'm no longer the same. Amen. Amen. Now listen to me, listen to me well. I'm talking about the mind this morning. The mind here, and boy, uh, we already in agreement with, like the, the, we're in agreement with this here, that this world that we're in and we're living has lost its mind. Maybe not even having a mind right now. But nonetheless, I want you to read this with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, will you? The Bible reads right here in verse number one. The Bible says, Now I, Paul, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who, who, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with you, that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The Apostle Paul here is talking to born again believers. He's talking to those that are saved by the grace of God. He's talking to those that have a relationship with God Almighty. Their minds have been changed there, but he's talking to them that have a mind there that's been born again. But notice this in verse number two. Paul is addressing the church of Corinth there, and he tells them, he said, I know your thoughts 
toward me. He said, I know how you're thinking about me. And he said, you think that I'm a fleshly man. Now here's the thing, church. They called him a fleshly man because why? He called out their sins. Isn't that something? Now I want you to hold this right here and please hear me, hear me well now. A fleshly man will not call out your sins. Amen. He will not do that. What a fleshly man will do, he'll cover up your sins. A fleshly man or a fleshly woman will make you feel good about your sins. That's what this flesh does. You know, your flesh now, if you're saved, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This old nature of yours, it loves to indulge in sin. But I remind you, dear friend, there's pleasure in sin for a season. That season's going to pass and you're going to reap what you sowed. And when you reap what you sow, you won't be happy with it either. Oh, no. Now may I say this here Paul is telling them that they've done wrong there. He addressed them in the first church there and the, well, the first letter to the church of Corinth he addressed them in love he rebuked them in love and he reproved them in love. Can I say this right here? Paul showed the church of Corinth the errors of their way. Now please hear me. I hope you understand this when I say this now. When somebody points out hey you're doing that wrong and you don't like it, and you say, no, I'm doing it right, then that tells me, dear friend, you're operating in the flesh. Amen. Can I just say this right here? Because I'm just going to share this, and I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. No, I won't embarrass them, but I'll say this right here. He'll know exactly who he is. We had the men's uh, breakfast last uh, couple of uh, Saturdays ago, right? And had the men's breakfast there. I had a plan, boy, I was going to put this amount of grits in that pot. Boy, I'm so glad that an individual said, hey, preacher, you might not want to put that much in there. <laughs> Amen. Hey, we'd have been still eating grits right now. I'm telling you. Hey, but here's the thing now. Paul's trying to help them out. Paul's trying to address and say, you're doing some things wrong. Don't do this. Don't do that. Their response was, Paul, you're fleshly. How dare you tell us that we're doing wrong? How dare you tell me? How dare you point out my transgressions and my sins? Because I want to remind you what he said to them. Now, do you need to listen to me on well this year? He told them, he said, there's some people in the church that are high-minded individuals. They think they're better than others. Can I tell you, none of us are better than anybody. Amen. None of us are better than anybody. But there are those in the church of Corinth. They thought they were better. They thought they were better. They had the, the better positions, the better uh, uh, positions in church there, and whatever you want to call that there. They are high minded individuals, but also there were people in the church of Corinth. They were suing one another. Y'all hear me? Brothers and sisters in Christ suing one another. Now, see, we think it's bad when you have family members suing each other, right? That's pretty bad, right? It's on a whole nother level when your brother and sister in Christ are suing each other over what? Earthly things. Earthly things. Can I say this right here? When I die, somebody else is going to have my house. Amen. When I die, that old car that I drive around, somebody else is going to drive it if it's still drivable. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you this. Listen, a carnal mind now, a carnal mind. And we're seeing into that carnal mind of the church of Corinth here. They were suing their own. Matter of fact, they were just, they were bringing them out into public rather than resolving it between their brothers and sisters in Christ, like Jesus said over in Matthew chapter 17, that we're supposed to do, right? Amen. Hey, they brought them out into the public. And when you do those things, dear friend, what are you doing? You're bringing shame and reproach to the name of Christ. Now, I know this ain't popular preacher, but we need to hear this today now. Hey, this is exactly what he was reproving them of. And then there were those in the church, they were abusing the Lord's Supper. And boy, can I tell you this right here? That's one of the most crucial things that a church has a responsibility to uphold. Amen. It's the Lord's Supper. I don't know why some don't want to take it, but that's between them and the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, hey, do this in remembrance of me. That's what he said. We're to be obedient unto him. But they were indulging. What were they doing? They were gluttoning. They were eating. They were having feasts in the Lord's Supper and they were indulging themselves in there to the place of gluttony there. And matter of fact, Paul even said, hey, that's the reason why some of your people are dead. Because you're abusing the things of God. See, friend, can I tell you this right here? God does not play around when it comes to serving Him. And we're not to play around when it comes to serving Him. Amen. Amen. Hey, here He tells them now. They're, they're indulging. They're abusing the Lord's Supper. But then even more than that, what they were doing, there was sexual misbehavior in the church. Now, church, I told you, who's he talking to? Those that are saved, those that have been born again, those that have tasted the grace of God, those that have been changed, and he's rebuking them because why? They were still continuing in sin. May I say this? I need somebody to call my sins out. You need somebody to call your sins out as well. 
And may I say this right here, the good thing about it, when your sins are called out, see, your old pride can swell up all you want to, but what's going to happen? It's going to cause destruction in your life. We're to humble ourselves before God. And when our sins are pointed out, we can humble ourselves before God. And you know what he does, hallelujah, church. i got to remind you, you know what he does. And this is the wonderful thing about Christianity. When we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm telling you, what happened to the day and age that we live in? When the preacher gets up there, Sunday school teacher gets up there and points out your sin, and boy, you just sit there, sour and soak, rather than repent. Amen. Oh, can I just tell you one big thing today? The Bible says that we're not to forsake ourselves together, right? Mm-hmm. Amen. The Bible tells us now, oh, I know this might get a little greedy this morning, but I love you, hallelujah. The Bible still tells us that we're not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together. We are to be in the house of God every time you can be in the house of God. And if you can't be in the house of God, my dear friend, you need to make sure God gives you the green light that you're okay with not being in his house. Amen. But being out of the house of God because you want to consume upon your flesh, you're going to stand before Jesus. And you mark it on this day, the preacher said that. And it's going out there on Facebook, friend. And it's going out there on the internet. But it's the word of God. We are not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together as the matter of some is. But what? We are to exhort one another. We are to exhort one another another as we see the day approaching. What day is approaching? I already said it now. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. He's coming. This is the mindset now. And Paul is rebuking them. And Paul is opening up their eyes and said, hey church don't you realize this is what you're doing and you need to get right with God. And verse number two, they said Paul, you're carnal. Who are you pointing this out? You're a carnal man. You're a wicked man. Can I say this right here? Friend, when you are reproved, how you respond lets you know the condition of your mind. I'm going to say it again. When somebody calls out your sin, your wrong, your error, and how you respond to it, it reveals the condition of your mind. When you try to flip the coin and say, who are you to tell me that? Who are you to point that out? Then that tells me and should tell you as well, you got a carnal mind you got a fleshly mind. Rather than saying, man, I appreciate you. I'm so thankful for you, sister. I'm so thankful for you, brother. Appointing this out of my life. Why? I don't know about you, but God, by God's grace here, church, I don't want to come short when my walk with God. I want to be as close to God as possible. I want to be as close to Jesus Christ as possible. And the Bible tells us that we're not to walk in darkness. We're not to have fellowship with sin. We're not to have fellowship with this world. And matter of fact, he said, if any man loved this world, the love of God's not in him. I want to be as close. Boy, it used to be an old saying there. You can't preach me to the house. You can preach me to the altar. What's happened, church? What's happened? See, some, some of you have already come in here to the house of God and said, well, I'm sinless. I don't have any wrong. I don't have any fault. That's a carnal mind. Oh, my dear friend, you've got faults. You've got shortcomings. And you need to let, hallelujah, oh, yes. As it said over there in Isaiah, you need to let the master work on your clay marred vessel again over and over. Let him work on you. Let him work on you. I'm hurrying. I promise you I am. Now, listen, the carnal mind. Here's the test now. The carnal mind to see where the few child of God. I'm talking to you, Christian, that are saved by the grace of God. See the condition of your mind. Have you forgot? about what matters most. Have you forgot about God and are focused on this flesh and on the world? Have you forgot about God? Have you lost the appreciation for the things of God? It's talking about, it's an old saying, right? Having an attitude of what? Gratitude. When's the last time that you thank the Lord, not yourself? That you thank God and you gave God there. Hey, have you lost this attitude there of appreciation for the rich blessings of God? Have you lost that desire for the things of God? Here's the question again now. And I'm asking you, talking about your mind. Talking about your mind. So many people say, well, preacher, it's so hard to read the Bible. It's so hard to understand the Bible. If you have that desire, friend, it's not hard. Amen. If you've lost that desire, it is hard. Oh, I'll say it again. I believe I might need to. Because why? So it's so hard to understand the Bible, but yet you can go and spend four years in college. It's so hard to comprehend what the Bible says. No, what it is is you want everything easy, and that's your carnal mind. The Bible says we're to do what? Study to show ourselves approved. Matter of fact, if you want to know God in the mind of God, and you should, how many of you want to know the mind of God? Uh, come on now. You want to know the mind of God? Preacher just pressured you to lift your hand up, didn't he? No. I'll just ask you an honest question now. If you want to know God, get in his word. Now, you said, I want to know God. When's the last time you got in the word of God? When's the last time that you opened up his book? Well, preacher, I came to church last Sunday. Oh, no, friend. 
carnal. You have given over to the flesh. Lost the desire for the spiritual thing. Because this book, it, hey, it was written by a man. Sure he did. He wrote it with his hand. But it was inspired by God. Hallelujah. God, this is God's word. This is God's word now. And I'm carrying a little step further now. Have you lost your desire for the word of God? Have you lost your desire, not just for the scriptures, but also for supplication? Preacher, I can't pray. Every time I pray, I go to sleep. Well, fall asleep praying. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I ain't trying to be funny about that, but I'm being honest. I mean, it, it, you wake up and you wake up. What do you do? You get back to praying. Have you lost that desire to pray, to talk to God? Have, have, I mean, we can have a communication. Y'all realize who we talk to? No, I believe some of you don't. You realize who we can have a communicating time with, a communing time with, not a one-sided there, a dialogue with God. We can talk with God. He can talk with us. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you entered into that prayer closet? Has he spoken to you? Hallelujah. Amen. Have you lost it? You don't have that desire anymore. The preacher, you're making me feel bad. No. Preacher, I didn't come to church for you to make me feel this way. I come to you to lift me up there, to encourage me. I'm trying to get you right for you. Oh, I'm trying to help you out. This mind right here, this carnal mind that the Apostle Paul was accused of having there, but it was the church of Corinth had that mindset. It's the same mindset. See, the carnal mind is reverting back to the old man's mind. The carnal mind is reverting back to the old ways of thinking. Have you lost that desire for the Scriptures, for supplication, When's the last time, I, come on now, boy, I, I, boy this, this, this struck me right here. When's the last time you just had a shout and spell with God? The preacher, now you're preaching sensationalism and all that stuff. No, I'm not. Heart of gratitude, right? Heart of gratitude, right? When you're thankful for something, we, we naturally have it within us. It's within us, right? To give back thanks and praise and to exalt why do you think they're out there of uh, the football games and the, foot, the baseball games and you see them applauding, right? It's within it there. I'm talking about the Spirit of God. And boy, we have the new man inside there. And boy, we, we're here, and we're, we're contemplating, we're thinking, we're meditating there and we look upon the goodness of God. When's the last time that you stood up there and said, Hallelujah, I thank God that I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, amen. When's the last time? That you truly worship and exalted and praised God. Say, preacher, I've never done that in my lifetime. You're missing out, friend. You're missing out. And I'm imploring you right now, if you lost that desire to serve the Lord, to shine through the Holy Spirit of God, losing that appetite, and you lose that appetite, is because the carnal mind has taken over. Now, church, I'm wrapping it up with this here, so please hang tight. In verse 4 and verse number 5, we'll look more in detail about that tonight if you come back. If you don't, you're going to miss out. I promise you will. But in verse number 4 and verse number 5, it tells us about a battle. He said our warfare is not carnal, right? Paul said, I'm not battling in this flesh. I'm not. My weapons of warfare are not in this flesh here, but they are of God. They're spiritual he said, there's a battle that takes place and it's a spiritual battle. And I've come this morning to let you know, child of God, that the devil is firing out those fiery darts. He's throwing them at your mind every single day, every single hour. Why? To get you in a carnal mindset. To get you back to where you once were. To revert back to the old man and the way the old man used to think. God doesn't want us there. He doesn't want us in that mindset. But there's a battle that takes place there. There's a war that's going on there. And the Bible tells us that we should be casting them down, that imagination. Now, you know what imagination is. You should. Y'all are some pretty smart individuals that I'm talking to, right? Your imagination, it can do what? It can do some wild things, right? But the Bible says our imagination should be cast down. It should be tamed, amen. Through what? The power of God. Can I tell you this here, church? This is a supernatural power. That we do not possess, but God does. And he gives it to every single one of us if we do what? Humble ourselves before him. I will let you know the supernatural power of God, he can still do great things in our minds. He can change your mind. See, some of you right now are battling. And I, I say this, regardless of how old you are or how young you are, you battle the mind. 
You do now. It's just put in different clothing. It's just dressed in a different way. There's a battle that takes place in the minds of every single person there, and it's not restrained to age there. Everyone that's saved is in this battle. There's a battle of depression that's going on in the people of God like no other. I'm telling you, it is. And why should it be that way? When God has saved our souls, he's given us the Holy Spirit of God, he's given us the Word of God there, but yet people are battling depression. Say, preacher, you've got to give me a simple answer. Well, there's not a simple answer there because our mind is not that simple. Amen. But I will tell you this right here. When you are not humbling yourselves before God and you're not submitting yourself to the authority of God, my dear friend, you will give place to the devil and the devil, all he wants, he wants to do, all he wants to do is steal, kill, and destroy you. That's it. Amen. And depression comes in and he wants you to end your life. See, it's a sad statement here. But church, it's still... Boy, this ought to crush us. We've got third graders coming to school. I, I want to end my life. Third graders saying, I, I, I want to die. I don't want to go back home. Third graders saying, I don't want to exist anymore. Say, preacher, you think that's happening in this church? God forbid, I hope not. I hope not with all my heart. But I'm telling you, the mind is a battle that's going on. There's a mind, there's a battle that's going on in your mind right now. There's a battle that's raging right here and right now and church service in your mind. You've got to make up your mind. Who are you going to believe? Who are you going to trust? You're going to trust God? You're going to trust his word? Or are you going to trust your feelings? You're going to trust your flesh? You're going to trust the devil? Now I'm telling you now, there's a battle that's going on. There's also a battle as well of boundaries. Oh yes, young or old, it doesn't matter. Hey, the young people, what do they want to do? They want to get out of the house of God. They want to get out of the house. They want to leave mom and dad. They don't want no boundaries right there. Don't tell me and put limitations on my life. Adults are the same way. Amen. I'm telling you now, hey, every single one of us, they, we battle the mind, the battles of mind, the boundaries right there. Don't tell me I cannot go and indulge in my fleshly desires. The Bible tells us if you sow in the flesh, you're going to reap corruption, friend. I didn't, preacher didn't say that. God said that. I don't want you to have corruption. I mean that with all my heart. I don't want your life to be corrupted. You know what it means to be corrupted? It means to be ate up from the inside out. It means to deteriorate. It's just like when you have that deteriorating arthritis. It slowly eats away at the bones. Slowly eats away at your strength there. That's what happens when you sow to this flesh. You reap corruption. God forbid, church, listen, I'm hurting, I promise you now. And listen to me, listen to me well. Boy, this carnal mind, this battle, there's a battle that goes on in the mind there of depression, of boundaries as well. There's a battle that's taking place, and I see it prevailing more than anything, and it's a battle of acceptance. Hey, I, I want to say this here, listen to me well, child of God. We need to be resolved in our mind that my acceptance is not of this world, but it's of heaven. My acceptance is not of man, but it's of God. If God accepts me and I'm lining up with his word, then I'm happy. Happy am I. Now, if your mindset, if you're trying to balance this thing out, friend, you're going to drive yourself crazy is what you're going to do. You're going to hurt yourself is what you're going to do. So you need to be resolved today, right? Come now, let us reason together. You need to be resolved in your mind today that I, as long as I'm accepted with God, nobody else matters. Amen. Amen. Acceptance. Boy, I'm not attractive. Nobody loves me. Nobody appreciates me. There, the battle of the mind there. The battle of boundaries there. The battle of depression. May I say this as well? There's a lot of things that goes on in the mind. And boy, we could talk more about this. I promise you we will tonight. But there's a battle of appreciation. We do things and nobody acknowledges it. Nobody recognizes it. Things that we think, boy, somebody ought to say at least something about. I did this act here. Appreciation. Can I tell you this here? A heart's desire, child of God. Your heart's desire. A spiritual mind only wants the applause of one. It's God. What's happened to that? Can I ask you that? Where's that gone? Where all your heart's desire is to please God the Father. Now, if I asked you, and you'd be honest with me this morning, I know you would be, hopefully. Don't you want to hear from God the Father? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Don't you want to hear? See, everybody thinks that that's a guarantee you're going to hear that because you're saved. Church, that's not true. You've got to be a good and what? 
faithful servant. Amen. Not carnal. Not going after the things of this world. Not serving the things of this world. We've got a kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. It's already been said. Many people have already prayed for the souls of lost individuals. It's not just during their church time that souls are to be saved. It's also when we go outside into this lost and dying world. I was talking to a man yesterday. And I was telling this man how important it is to put God first. How important it is to know God. Why? The devil's out to steal, kill, and destroy. And my dear friend, he's making havoc in the minds of people. The minds of people. The boundaries are put there. Can I ask you this question here? And I'm done, I promise you I am. To win the battle of the mind, for you, child of God, to win the battle of the mind. Do you even know what I'm talking about? I hope you do. To win the battle, you must always agree with God. Amen. You will not win it when my mama told me this. My daddy told me this. My teacher told me this. Psalmist said in Psalms 119, 165, he said, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. You agree with God, there'll be great peace in your life. Though everything else is falling apart, there's going to be great peace in your life. You agree with God what he will do. I tell you, it's a supernatural power. And through Jesus Christ, he can deliver your mind from this carnal, fleshly, ungodly way of thinking. There are people I know that I'm talking to this morning. You need that deliverance this morning. Your mind needs to be delivered from the old man and live in the new man. And that deliverance only comes through Jesus Christ. It only comes through the power of the blood of Christ Jesus. Boy, we've been looking at that in Hebrews chapter 9. And the blood of Christ, the power of the blood there, what does it do? It cleanses, purges our conscience, the mind, your mind. I ask of you this morning, your mind, has it been enlightened or is it darkened? Your mind, has it been healed or is it still damaged? Jesus Christ has the power. He does. And Christ and Christ alone. To heal supernaturally. To do the work that needs to be done. In an individual's thoughts. In their conscience. I believe this with all my heart. I believe this with all my heart. There's some of you right now. You need to be honest. Transparent before the Lord. You've got a troubled mind this morning. You're not at peace with God. You need to come. You've got a troubled mind. There's a dear lady that just told me this this past week. She said, I'm not sure, preacher. If I die today, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I would go to heaven. Some of you got a troubled mind. You know you don't have that peace. You need to get it settled. Jesus would do that. Some of you that are saved, you got a dirty mind. And you need it cleansed through the blood of Jesus Christ. You're indulging in sin that you ought not to be indulging in. Oh, dear friend, you don't have to. You can be set free of it. Jesus will deliver you. There's some of you as well here this morning. You need to find a place around an old-fashioned altar as your mind is scarred by the old man and you need deliverance. Jesus will do it. Jesus will give you that supernatural healing. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, I pray now in Jesus' name that every single one of us be honest, transparent and open before you. The battles that are being faced, the temptations that goes through our mind, what decision that needs to be made. God, I pray that no one will leave the house of God until they do business with you. Lord, there are those that are struggling in their minds of being the individual that you called them to be. Lord, there are those that are struggling in their mind and drawn away by temptations of lust and sinful things of this world. Lord, their heart, O oh God, and their affections is not set upon you. 
I pray for the church. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ here and now, Lord. I pray for Westfield Creek Baptist Church. And Lord, this battle that takes place in our mind, Lord, of nobody loving, nobody appreciating us, oh God. Lord, that we would win it, that we would win the battle here today. And allow the power of God, allow the precious blood of Jesus, cleanse our minds of evil thoughts. Lord, there are many, there's some, oh God, that are looking over the fence, Lord, and saying it's greener over there. Lord, there's some that are looking, trying to get out of their relationships and leaving their families. Oh God, there, there are people that are being drawn away, oh God. I, I'm asking in Jesus' name right now. Lord, the people of God will be honest before you. Lord, there are people that are struggling in the past, oh God, being abused. Lord, being, a, being abused and neglected as a child and well, things that haunt them and still don't. Lord, need the victory. They need the victory. God, help us, the church. Help us be the people. Lord, we want to be spiritually minded, not carnally minded. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll stand to your feet, please.